Hello, welcome back. Last week was spring break, so I took some time with my family and we really enjoy it. Something, of course, we did not enjoy was the shooting in Christchurch, uh, New Zealand, where during which 50 people, 50 Muslim, were killed by a single shooter, a mass. Uh, mass murderer, a white supremacist, and it was uh, very difficult and painful to read and, and, and hear at the news about this. And of course there were many statements by politicians, by churches, and United Church made a beautiful one. What really caught my attention during these days is what Reverend Paul Walfall, a friend of mine, uh, wrote on Facebook. He said, now that we have made a declaration and we have voiced our outrage at what has happened, what's next? And for me, that's very powerful because, yes, we might have shared a lot on Twitter, on Facebook, we might have change our avatar we you know in solidarity on social media with muslims around the world and what happened a day or two days later the sad reality is most of us is back at our routine and continue to exist as if nothing happened <laughs> It, it, those kind of news has become uh, a little like fast food something we eat rapidly and then we move on we continue our days um, and we continue our days until next time we don't take time to understand process it digest it and makes me think what Isaiah the prophet Isaiah says at the beginning of chapter 55 Isaiah spoke to his people and says why do you spend your money for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy I still believe personally that's me I hope it's true I still believe that it's part of our human nature that we look for something more. We have a quest for something bigger than ourselves. We want a better world for us, for our children, for our grandchildren, for the next generations. But too often we're busy. We are too busy to live. We're busy too busy to strive for what we desire. For Isaiah's people, were, they were in exile after a terrible conquest. They were deported, they were in exile. And they were, most of them, trying to make a good living out of it. And forgetting what the promise made to them or their ancestor, they were forgetting home. They put it on the back burner, I would say. And for us, sometimes it's making more money, uh, securing, securing a way of life. Maybe we get busy of trying all classes of all sort or watching movie on Netflix. We do all sort of things during our days that are not necessarily bad in them in itself but what about our taste our hunger for a better world for the end of racism for fighting discrimination Islamophobia homophobia sexism do we just do it when we find time in between all of this but Isaiah said also, everyone who is thirsty, come to the water. 
and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, it's free. It does not seem to make sense, but maybe it's like when we go to the grocery store and you have people make us taste food. Of course, the goal is so we taste it, find it good, and buy it. But maybe the same image apply here said, try it, folks. Try justice. Try peace. Try harmony. Try meeting one another. And if you like the taste of it, maybe you can continue and buy in, not buy the product, but buy in this concept. It's an invitation. And the good news is, it's free. <laughs> it's free. We don't have to spend millions of dollars to reach out to our next of kin. And everyone can do it in his or her or a them way. But we have to try it. We have to make an effort. It's, it's not magic. It will not happen by itself. It will not fall from the sky. It will not be forced upon ourselves. We will have to move, standing up or reaching out. And there's so many ways, like I said, reaching out. Maybe it's advocacy. Maybe it's changing the way we speak, expression. Maybe it's talking to children and grandchildren and don't teach them something maybe we have learned about other groups, other people. It's up to us to make that difference. And it can start with beautiful statement. That's nothing wrong with that. But it's the next step. Now that we have made that statement, it's time to do something. Not taught in prayers. Do something. And that's what I hope. My hope, even if maybe it will not happen at a large scale, we can do something ourselves and start brick by brick this revolution, this new society Jesus came to invite us to build. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette, and until next time, take care of yourself, and bye-bye.